Hi guys. Hi guys. My name is uh, my name is David Nguyen. Um, I'm a full stack developer to you, but um, by nights I play MacGyver. Uh, you can s you can see me at the karaoke bar in in uh, Torrance at Max Karaoke, uh, belching out 80s songs. And today um, I'm I'm going to tell you about a journey, uh, some of the journeys I've taken, and some of the uh, things I've made uh, with Gutenberg. You know. Gutenberg is a powerful tool, and I want to tell you how to play with it. This is MacGyver Plays with Blocks. All right. It's just a little early, but it's okay. All right. So MacGyver Plays with Blocks. Um, so who here is familiar with uh, Gutenberg Blocks? Cool. Who here likes using Gutenberg Blocks? That's more than I expected, so we're in a good place. <laughs> All right, so, you know, this guy is great. This guy's my hero, you know, I can tell. Love you, know, man. you know, this is, this is well, who I'm challenging, I'm challenging today. You know, MacGyver, MacGyver embodies, you know, just a little bit about me, a little extended bios. MacGyver really, really is one who, uh, who I look up to because oftentimes, um, you, know, uh, you know, I've been, uh, de facto CTO of a few co a few companies and like you know having to lead a bunch of crazy projects, and I think a few of us in this room have been there before where where you're just like you're given this project and you need to combine this thing with that thing and with this thing to, and you you only have like you know five lines of PHP and like a Sunday to do it and you're thinking hmm how do I do this well you know I was a I was a a lapsed WordPress developer myself and then until I found my way with Gutenberg. Uh, Gutenberg and Gutenberg has a lot of, has many excellent features uh, that, that I love and it's really great. F it li really lends itself to um, making a lot of new tools. So here's me with uh, different, uh, with like worse hair back then, uh, talking about, uh, talking in uh, WordCamp Riverside uh, where, uh, about, you know, um, rendering Gutenberg content and native experiences. Um, I don't know who the other guy is. <laughs> so over there, um, me and him, we talked about, you know, hooking up uh, Gutenberg to VR and fax machines. Um, I have a little video for we'll play. Ah, spoilers. All right. So videos and slideshows is always a perilous journey. I'm not sure if it'll work. All right. You, so we don't get sued. All right. So we have Gutenberg uh, before you saw it in CTI. Now we have Gutenberg in a fax machine. <coughs> now, now we're faxing to Gutenberg and Gutenberg texting. And here's a Wapu. And then here is uh, some uh, some more people. All right. But anyways, um, Gutenberg. Um, so there, I'm demonstrating you can use uh, Gutenberg and power a lot of uh, different things besides just like you know WordPress web web posts. Ah, it's perilous. Escape. Thank you. Well, I escaped too. I escaped too hard. <laughs> all right, Gutenberg is great. Okay, we, we can all agree there. So, uh, recap about new, new editor. Um, Gutenberg, uh, the, the new editor, aka Gutenberg. Uh, you have blocks, which are discrete units of content. You can go and re rearrange around, and the best part about that is. In the classic editor, um, the only real mode you can think about a, a post as is this big blob of HTML. But now you can think of your post as as a series of blocks, a stack of blocks that you can move together uh, really easily instead of you know just having uh, just having one big blob of text. So here are some Jenga blocks. Uh, Jenga blocks. Um, there's a rumor that uh, someone made Jenga blocks flavor Gutenberg block somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where to buy them, but if, if someone knows, uh, please tell the audience later. All right. But today we're going to talk about you know making some crazy blocks. So uh, here we're going to talk about uh, using blocks to power native mobile content. You know, which is typically uh, what you would see a typical use case. And then we're going to use Gutenberg blocks to author authorize um, interactive content like quizzes, which is uh, quizzes is a legitimate form of of news now. And also, like a little extra, uh, using 
Gutenberg into uh, a video production pipeline, which, you know, it's, it's, if you've ever been on social media, you see those, you know, square videos that says Business Insider. You, you won't believe uh, how this world has changed. It's like a, f a flying like plane or whatever. And they're all awful, except when they're about food, then they're great. <laughs> and, you know, when they're about food, they're great. I love them. And then I was wondering, and it's something I wondered myself is like, how can you automate this? Because, you know, it's very co cookie cutter, right? And apparently a lot of people have spent a lot of thought into this. So, you know, I thought this would be very ap apropos. All right. So later on today, you can go to snackable.app. And it's, it's, it's a great site. Um, it's mainly about junk food and MacGyver. So, you know, uh, browse at your leisure after this talk. And um, also, uh, coming soon, uh, coming soon, there will be a Snackable app, uh, Android app in the Play Store. So please look, uh, look forward to that. But anyways, let's talk about that app, um, MacGyver memes and junk food, it's great. So when I was building the site, um, talk about that app, I did have some guiding principles. All right. First, first um, one, of, one of the things was I did not want, you know, I, you know, I mentioned that already, like the classic editor, classic editor had um, all the, all your posts as like one big HTML blob, and you know, uh, who here in the room is a, is a developer? Okay, so you, you know, and, and we've all been before. You know, you scrape a, a bunch of HTML soup, and then you think it's gonna be a straightforward, you know, a selector to, to grab like this part of the element in this big list and it turns out there's like 15 edge cases you didn't account for and parsing that data is very difficult, right? Well, when, when I first saw Gutenberg, uh, uh, one of the things I thought was like, wait, I don't have to define my posts in terms of like, you know, big text blobs, right? I can just use these blocks and then tr and interpret those blocks as the structured hierarchical content where I, can, where I can then in turn, you know, interpret that later on. So, you know, I made a little uh, diagram for this. Um, Gutenberg blocks is like this. It's like the thing on the left, and then uh, this is how you know I, I feel about the classic editor, you know, because this, this is the kind of output you get. And you know, you know, when you're building um, an application and using like you know WordPress is like fundamental to your to your content strategy, it's like, which would you rather work with? You know, a bunch of a bunch of blocks or just uh, crumbled up receipts? You know. Faster. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> All right, so but it's exactly. So yeah. the, the, the idea is um, the idea is you have one data source coming on the left, and then you can project it in many ways in, in different forms. All right. Uh, another thing is um, in the Snackable app, all the data in the posts is strictly just content, meaning that um, I'm not using any of the column layouts, I'm not using any of the, any of like the presentation layouts because, because in um, that scheme is like, all of that should be done on the theme side, on the theme side, on the theme side, on the client side, whether it be your native client, or a game client, or, or whatever is ingesting it. So that way, that if, if you need to make um, changes to how things are laid out, or you need to make big changes to multiple big sweeping changes to your data, like your content. They're not mixed together, and it'll be a lot easier to re uh, reason about. And I'm sure we've all been there before, where you have a bunch of like presentational divs. You go in the code editor and the classic editor, and you put in a bunch of you know cheeky divs everywhere, and it works great. It works great for like you know a year ago, and then when you go back and because you your clients or, or whoever you know wants you look at it, you're like, what did I do again? You know, we've all been there before. So having that discipline where you think of your content strictly as data re uh, really you know, removes that burden from you. It's a little bit more work up front, but you know, it's a lot easier down the road. So uh, I think of it as, you know, th the difference is if you're disciplined and you think of your uh, data as content separated from your presentation uh, layer, think of it as a Swiss Army knife, whereas, you know, if you, uh, Bundle it, bundle it all in at once. You know, you get this guy. This guy works great. You know, for the first few months, and then it breaks. All right. And then one thing, uh, one thing I love is, 
and I always hype on is uh, content authoring uh, user experience is paramount. Um, who here you ha has ever used short codes before? And who here has ever used short codes to embed rich widgets or like you know data or whatever inside your posts, right? And and wh whoever and and like you know I'm going to show you something that uh, we've all we've already all probably experienced before, you know. Eventually, when you, when you work with a uh, post, right? When you work with posts and you want to do something, uh, want to do something a little more complicated and want to have like rich, because everyone wants that rich, nice uh, media experience, the pure, sol pure solution like, you know, was to compose shortcuts together, right? But, but you know, when you actually look at it in the output, you end up with something like this. And then this is uh, you know, a little scary to look at, right? And, and I don't care if, uh, if you're now, if you're someone who you prefer, if you're someone who prefers like to edit the code themselves, like like for this kind of things, because I see you know 15 places right here where I can make mistakes, where I can make mistakes, and you know short codes can be very temperamental based on how they're implemented, and you know you put like a wrong uh, a wrong uh, bar somewhere, and all of a sudden your your post is broken, and you know you get phone calls at four in the morning, right? So, you know, this is not optimal content edit experience, right? It's, it's too, many, uh, too many places to make mistakes and, you know, it's hard to reason about when you're uh, going through and editing content, which, you, which is not good, you, because especially with, like, you know, a very creative, demanding job, like co entering, offering content, you want as little cognitive um, walls as possible. So then, uh, we're, what we're going to show a look at later is this. So this is a little um, plugin I wrote for authoring quizzes. Um, you have a sidebar right here where you define your topics, um, and you can use blocks uh, on the left to uh, author your questions. And uh, there are nice things. For example, um, it the plugin right now uh, requires you that you make all options equally possible, and that's great because this. Is, because that's a rule that's enforced inside the editor, so you don't have a situation where it's like, okay, the intern, the intern, uh, you know, foobar a question, and the whole thing breaks because you know the Mac doesn't work out. And also, like when you look at it, you, can, you see where it really clearly that okay, here's a question block, here's a question block, here's a question block. Now the good thing about this is is that instead of having Having just a custom plugin or a custom UI interface for editing just uh, quiz content, right? Because these are Guten blo Gutenberg blocks, you can also do things like embed and insert other blo other Gutenberg blo blocks installed in your site. So you can do things like you know, there's no reason why you can put an image at the top, put some copy uh, paragraph blocks below each question, or like you know, just what we're going to do later is put a big fat picture of MacGyver at the bottom. But you know, I think you know, I think, and don't at me. This is a be a much better editing experience than just editing shortcuts. <laughs> All right, content types. So in Snackable, there are three content types. Uh, three content types: the article, normal posts. Um, one thing I found about Gutenberg recently is, which is a really cool feature, is you can restrict what kind of blocks uh, the Gutenberg editor is allowed to use, which is great because uh, sometimes, you know, when, you, uh, when your client wants to give you the tools, ask for the tools to work on the site, which, is, which you know, sounds great in theory because that's, that's ideally less work for you. But then you realize you left, some, you left some doors unlocked and, you know, they do something bad and it's all broken. But, you know, typical WordPress po uh, posts, and the output, uh, the Gutenberg block output, is <laughs> is uh, pretty parsable, pretty easily reasonable about, which means um, it can be interpreted really easily by many devices. There we go. Well, this way. Uh, big start for today: uh, quizzes. So in uh, the scheme, we have quizzes as a separate post type. Um, because really, uh, when you think about uh, the kind of R, because you know, when you're going uh, to consume a quiz, there's something interact, some interactive content where you have your 
a reader or a consumer actively participating in the content and like in interacting with it, whereas the post is more passive, right? And it makes sense to have that separation. But uh, for all intents and purposes, it's a normal post. You can use post blocks, like your typical um, uh, post uh, creation blocks, like paragraph, image, and all that with it. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you have um, controls in the plugin and checks in the plugin to make sure the quiz is still valid, which you know we all make mistakes, and we all make, we want to make sure that um, all, um, you know we, we're, we have our backs uh, looked after. And also, their generation. So, taking that quiz data, um, we can um, spit it out to WordPress, uh, spit it out to a native client, and then interpret that data as a quiz. But you know, why not go a step further and make those fun videos with the ask you questions and a bunch of interrogative statements? You know, but the ones that ask, "What time do you wake up in the morning?" So, um, in, in a bit, <laughs> I'm going to ask some for some audience participation. We're going to make a quiz, and then we're going to turn it into a video. All right. And the one thing uh, I want to um, uh, cap this off with is is using uh, thinking of WordPress uh, this way. It's not just strictly for presentation, but as a way to just you know manage your content, right? Mm -hmm. A system to manage your content is and you know having this having discipline to make sure all the content is separated from all the Presentation logic. It allows your data to be con consumed by, you know, a bunch of other devices and experiences that you might you might not have. Earlier, I talked about how uh, me and my friend uh, up there, Leo, we used uh, Greenberg to uh, power text message messages, uh, fax machines, VR, VR, and I think there's a, a TTY in there. But we also uh, can you can use it for other things like you know uh, video generation, and I'm sure if if one uh, enterprising individual were on to you know burn out to a toast, uh, into a toaster, but the reason the reason why this is possible is because the data is very uh, is clean, structured, and and easy to interpret in a format that's uh, that can be consumed by and understood by many many different uh, devices. So, you know. There's no reason why uh, you can't have your WordPress um, content have an endpoint in the REST API go and have it be consumed by a serverless function or, or a serverless function that runs a job to generate PDFs or you know, books or pamphlets or whatever. Or, you know, in, like any games, like if you're a game developer, you want to have um, you want to have all your content in a separate place because games are really complex. So you want to be able to you know, have the authoring team author all the content, uh, and that means like characters, lore, images, and all that, right? While all the game engineers uh, worry about working on the client. And then, you know, if we have a clean contract and clean API between the two, um, you know, that's what makes you know big games possible. Uh, big games possible because otherwise, you know, if you have a situation where where you ask uh, someone, hey, so um, I tried parsing the HTML again, and it broke. You know, th those are conversations none of us want to have. All right, that's what we got. So, the the source code will be available here, but I'm not sure if I made it uh, public yet. So I'll just do that really quick. Check. All right. So while I, so while I check this, um, does anyone have any questions before the demo? Cool. Well, let's see. This is this is embarrassing. Me. So we have um, all the WordPress code here. Settings. Danger zone. Thank you. We're on the same page, friend. All right. Cool. Do 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 do. What is this called? Mobile. Thank you. Okay. Red buttons. So 
dangerous. Right? <laughs> we call it the danger zone for a reason. <laughs> dude, dude. Dude, 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 dude. All right. All right. Double check. Cool. All of the code will be available at at github.com slash snackable apps. All right. So let's go to the, let's go to some demos. All right. So let's show the quiz. All right. Sergio. Pop quiz. Do you, do you know what Pocky is? Yes. All right, cool. Saves me, saves me a bit of time. So I have a question. What time do you wake up in the morning? Oh, That's a good answer. <laughs> I'm proud. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of burger do you like? Your, your choices are In-N-Out, Five Guys, MVP, and Islands. What is your favorite Gutenberg block? Paragraph, image, column, or quiz? Oh, a quiz, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. I can't find my cursor. Here we go. What kind of pirogue do you like? Oh, I'm not sure. There's only one right answer. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 Leo, could you explain what a pirogue is? It's a dumpling from Poland or Ukraine or Russia. Oh. So, 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 so imagine. I don't know, but I want to try Yeah, so imagine a dank gyoza. <laughs> well, then. Beef. You are a vanilla pocky. <laughs> 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 All right. So let, let's go. Let's go in the back end and um, see uh, see how this works. Oh, I'm not logged in. Damn it. All right. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Just MacGyver BuzzFeed right now. Right? <laughs> oh, th th there's more. Hmm. What is my password? Do, 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 do. I think this is it. Okay, now you're going to have to change your password because that's on video. <laughs> Danger zone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's go in here. Let's read it again. Make sure. All right. Cool. Edit post. All right. So here's a big po uh, picture of Pocky. Uh, what time do you wake up in the morning? So each of the questions are blocks, right? Each of the questions are blocks. And you know, um, in instead of just doing what I did before, what I showed before with the shortcodes, where you're, where you're in the classic editor and you're doing a bunch of like weird brackets everywhere and doing choice one for attributes and all that, and you know having to do a bunch of fiddly bits in order to uh, uh, compose your content, all that's done for you in the Gutenberg editor in these nice blocks, blocks, and you know you can include position elements like include. Uh, result at the bottom. So I really wanted to. So now let's uh, change it. Let's go here. And move to the bottom. Go to the middle library. Let's pick some Cool Ranch Doritos. Update it. And view the post. And you can see we have an Im image block that, uh, up here. And we have an image block at the bottom. And the quiz still works. So let me pick some random options. No pocky. So how so with, with the rules of the quiz, um, how it works is each um, each uh, answer to each qu uh, question is is associated with a with a uh, topic, so and what it does is it takes the uh, maximum of um, each of, each of the topics, and then that's the topics you get based on the answer. And what's cool is is the Gutenberg API, uh, the data API, 
you know, it's a bit, bit, of, a bit of a pain in the neck, but um, once, you, once you get past it, you can do cool things like this. If I add a block, if I add a topic here, it shows up for all the questions. So let's what's, what's another flavor of Pocky? There is a rum Pocky. What, what, time would a, what time would a rum drinker wake up in the morning? <laughs> 4 p.m. is a good one. What, what kind of bur burger would a rum, po rum pocket eater uh, like? Burger King. A, a, rum, a rum pocket's favorite uh, Greenberg block. Mm, the uh, YouTube in bed block. Uh, they drink rum and watch videos all day. Nice. <laughs> Uh, favorite pure oak flavor? Bacon. Bacon. <laughs> All right. So then let's insert a block below the image. Paragraph block. Find out what pocky you are. <laughs> are you vanilla? Vanilla AF. We gotta use a vernacular. <laughs> Are you hella rum? All right. Update. Did we break a client site? No, we're good. OK. So if I select all the last options uh, all of we just made, it should deliver a rum pocky. OK, rum pocky wakes up at 4 PM, eats Burger King, likes a YouTube MP block, and likes bacon pierogues. Rum pocky. <laughs> All right, so that's all cool and all, but um, I also said there would be uh, there'd be video, so let's go look at that. So originally, I was going to introduce um, introduce a video generation and import it to, some, to like a, a video editor that will rename remain unnamed that costs thousands of dollars. But I think I was like, no, that's, uh, no, that's a little. Uh, in a, that's like you know, not not a very MacGyver thing to do. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you an example using all open source software, and you can take this today with with a little bit of MacGyvering. In fact, a lot of, a lot of MacGyvering, <laughs> <laughs> with a lot of MacGyvering, and you'll be able to uh, instantiate this and have your own uh, video content uh, pipeline with the code you, uh, you see on the repo. So I'm going. So I'm using this thing called. Uh, uh, I'm using a Python uh, notebook to generate this. If you don't know about it, they're great because it lets you have code along with prose and with your notes. So you know you write docu uh, self documenting code, and it's great for one of those things where you're, where you're messing with a bunch of code and you're not quite sure what you're doing, like I was. All right. And also uh, for those in the back or wherever where you can't see it very well, let me know so I can uh, zoom in. All right. We good? Yeah. Cool. All right. So here we have, um, this is a public endpoint. Everyone can read it. It's read only, I hope. So here is the uh, URI for uh, the um, quiz that we were working on. And, if our, and what we'll do is go through and, and print some blocks about it, print some information about it. So it'll print the title. And then this is what. Um, the blocks look like. So this is this is um, somewhat human readable, but <laughs> but you know we're not we're not the ones gonna, uh, that are going to be consuming this. The programs the programs and things we build are going to consume this, and this is much far easier to consume than just like you know a bunch of <laughs> like this big ball of HTML that you like you know, poke out with jQuery. But anyways, anyways, content. You can, so you can see like you can see like the 4 p.m. here is something we added, added right, and then we can go through and with our client, uh, with our client um, edit or uh, interpret this content into wherever we, whatever we want. All right, so let's do a little sanity check because we want to make sure our stuff works first, you know. All right, so here's a text-based um, interpretation of the quiz we wrote. So you know, if you're old school, you can just send this to your uh, line printer. All right. So 
So a uh, uh, off story is um, I can tell you the happy, happiest part if you're interested. So um, here um, I want to make sure all our quizzes uh, show up. So all our um, RAM Pocky options are there. Cool. All right. So I'm using this library called uh, MoviePy, which is a nice, convenient wrapper around uh, FFmpeg. Because writing FFmpeg um, on its own is a soul crushing activity. And this <laughs> nice life, uh, life, this nice light library, you know, abstracts that, which makes which makes it a lot easier. So um, I have this nice, uh, nice little function that makes a caption, makes a caption. And I have this uh, function right here, this Python function right here that takes it and displays the video. Um, I've been having trouble with the cache and so I might have to fiddle with the Explorer for a bit. And let's change the text to hello word camp Santa Clarita. And let's cross our fingers. Hmm, I'm a jerk. So let us look at this and hope it's not cached. Cool. It's a little small. Let's make the, let's make the font size bigger. Do, 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 do. Cool. All right, that's a little too big, but you get the point. So, so what's great about this is is that you can take this and deploy it, um, deploy it like if when they put something like this, take um, videos and templates uh, done by your design team or, or your video production team, and then ask them to um, uh, put empty spaces uh, for your text, and then you can write a program like this and deploy it on say say like a EC2 instance or a Lambda instance and on demand just ha uh, generate these videos, right? And it's great, <laughs> it's great to have this kind of, uh, kind of thing because you can do it for like, say, building proofs. Like, if you ever have to like, do, a, do a quick edit for a proof with a bunch of video, you know, it's also a soul-crushing activity sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, back, you know, if, if you attended Sergio talks, uh, Sergio's talk earlier, you know, these, these uh, kind of things, like, those things to do again and again where you want to automate, right? So I think the, the Important takeaway of this is you no. Know, if there are soul crushing activities you do on a daily basis, try to automate them. All right. So we have our data and we have a way to make video. Let's try to uh, combine them. So here is a bunch of logic, goes through, makes some stuff, and then it iterates through, it iterates through all the uh, choices. And then on the post, there is uh, the topics are saved as metadata on the post. Post and what it does, it goes through and combines them all in a way that we uh, can interpret later. Uh, I'm not going to go into this unless you really uh, someone asks me. But but just just know like what this code does, it just goes through and combines all data together, so we can go through and generate our clips. Let's see if it works. It's going through one by one, generating clips takes time. And now that the clips are in memory. Let's make sure they're there. Cool. I zoomed out, we're good. All right, and then let's generate the video. All right, I don't trust the cache, so I'm just gonna you know, take, uh, take my desk into my own hands. All right, so it's very big text. Um, we could spend five hours trying to um, trying to make the text all nice and neat, but you know, we don't have time for that. But what I will do is superimpose my driver's face on the background image. So we're gonna go into our media library, find this nice picture of MacGyver, <laughs> and save image as, I don't remember where I put my stuff, it's good. This is riveting television, people. Snackable, video, <coughs> Mackie, Mackie, Mac.jpg, save. Cool. How much time we got? All right. And then we're gonna open up a, a certain image editor. 
Uh, you're not using GIMP? No, no, it runs off of 4K. <laughs> I wish I were, though. Actually, let us. Actually, you know what? It'll be, it'll be, it'll be a bit more interesting if I do this. Mac. Dot JPG. So, what it does is, is I originally was going to crap and do, do nice things with it, but you know, we, we want that raw experience. So, I'm going to go. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> I have a time limit, guys. <laughs> the bomb's going off. <laughs> All right. All right, cool. All right, I am generating content right here, generating content right here, and then I am, I am going through and making sure it's correct. All right. Now that now that I have the now that I have the con uh, all the clips of memory, I'm going to stitch them all together, concatenate the videos together, like how you would in a sequence in any video editor. <laughs> all right, no errors. And then we will go in here and refresh. Something happened. Oh no, it's too small. All right, I'm gonna go back and change what we did. Can you play the one you made on Tuesday at Meetup? Oh, this is the one. Ah, okay. okay. All right. So, so I cut the wrong wire, but, but, but no one died yet, so. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Make sure. Okay, we, we saw the original video. I will open the not to be named text uh, photo editor. All right. We're gonna find our way back. All right. Cool. Go here. <laughs> And then we got nice, a uh, nice multiply. Cool. Safer web. <laughs> All right. You know, because you know, that's how, that's how MacGyver does, right? All right. Let's go back. We're going to go through the data, make our, make our sub clips, make sure they're in memory. I'm really scared right now. I think my laptop. Oh my god. <laughs> Second timer on your battery. <laughs> oh no, oh no, there is. I don't want to hear it. Yo, we got it! <clears throat> All right. We got it? Cool. All right, we got 10 minutes ish. Questions? Did you use MoviePie? You said MoviePie for this? Yes. Yeah, and again, um, all the source code, um, if you want um, if you want to look at it and inspect it, uh, inspect it uh, they're all on, oh, my, my laptop died, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> so, um, all, all the code is available on GitHub if you want to inspect it. Um, the, um, it's code in a bunch of languages. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have time to, to demo the mobile app, but the mobile, the, but the mobile app is written up there. Uh, it's, uh, it's up there if you want to look at it too. And it's, it's a similar kind of experience on the web. On the web, you'll be able to like take the quiz also. Um, and um, it's the the repo is a little dense. Um, I didn't I didn't put any documentation up yet, so see me. But um, could you possibly upload these to YouTube uh, <coughs> via via their API as well? So movie movie pie is a so movie pie all, all it is is a method to to construct videos yeah. like with FFmpeg. So it's akin to asking if like you know why can't OpenShot or like or like the KDE video editor upload to YouTube, right? Because that's, that's not really its job. No, yeah, they're like separately, right? Yes, exactly. So if if one was an enterprising individual, one could have this pipeline, crazy pipeline, where you, where you take your posts, take your posts, and then plug into some like you know workflow thing that's really complicated, it costs lots of money, and then you take that, and and then have this through the approval process where where you have five people vet it, and then it, and then just have that the content go through the same method for producing video. And then after that, proof it, and then, and then whatever treatment you want to do with it, and upload to whatever video sources do. But the but the idea is is you have it in code so you can describe 
you can actually build those things that I'm describing instead of just having to have five plugins or whatever try to coordinate together. So, so what you're saying is, if I, I'm an enterprising publisher and I work for a company called Snapfeed. Yes. Uh, we're based in Los Angeles, uh -huh. and we make meme content yes. in the Snap portal. Mm -hmm. And so what you're saying is, I can make meme content in Gutenberg that then appears in video form that then syndicates out my content everywhere. Correct. But also, all the code's GPL, so you know, just so you know. So I can do the same thing for propane accessories, so I can be propane feed. Exactly. <laughs> all right, uh, any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any, more, any more questions? Yes. Um. So right now, um, it, it's a lot of MacGyver ring. <laughs> um, but per perhaps some other in enterprising individual in this room does that MacGyver ring and publishes that MacGyver ring open source, and then shares that with you. Or creates a service that's really easy to use. Yeah, exactly. All right, uh, any more questions? Oh. Is it, uh, how how uh, possible are you would be to uh, have your quiz get several options and Something I'm working on, we'd be specific here. If you have a, you'd like to rank your choices on the series of, of options you're given. And so each time you say, well, this is my first choice, how can I present uh, in, the next, in the next survey question every option except for the one that was cho chosen as the first choice? Is that, uh, um, uh, so, so the question was, um, so, so how to make um, a, a, a kind of questionnaire where, where you say, if, if you do this, then the second block appears? Yes. OK. So that is very possible uh, with the Gutenberg API. Very possible. So you know, I can like, uh, bitch and complain about the Gutenberg API for days. But that's, but that's true about anything. I can bitch about anything. But it's very powerful, and um, th those are the kind of features uh, features that's really meant for, where you have like the ability to describe very uh, describe logically, logically uh, processes like that in your content. How, however, it does. In, however, in order to like, create that experience, uh, you have to get really familiar with React and the Redux API, uh, the Redux, which is uh, what the Gutenberg API block API uses. But once you get, once you get uh, get that down, then then uh, creating that experience will be uh, relatively straightforward. But you know, it's still a lot of work to do. All right, there's one question over here. How many times did you practice having the battery die a minute before you finished up something? So this is a way of life. <laughs> because this, this laptop right here is ridiculously expensive and has like a Xeon and like a NVIDIA Quadro in it. And it's also weighted as like 10 pounds. But one thing I always do is forget to plug it in. <laughs> and you know, when you, when you live that life, you live that life, right? <laughs> All right, uh, how are we doing on time? You have seven minutes. Oh, sick. Only I had seven more minutes of battery. Right, exactly, OK. So uh, I'm a competing enterprising publisher. Uh, with my uh, stackablefeed.com, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I'm really trying to get some competitive advantage. W what else could I use the Gutenberg API data to do? Hmm. Well, you can use it to make any experience where you need your content. Uh, you want to make rich content, and you, you want that content to behave in a certain way, in, in a certain way, because you can verify the correctness of that content in uh, the editor. So you know, that, that's what, what, what is really powerful about the Gutenberg editor is. is you know, it's clunky. It's weird. It gets weird bugs sometimes. But, but the future is, the hope is, uh, you can have all these nice APIs where you can go through and make more uh, powerful editing tools. Like for example, what if you have a plugin where you know, apparently people really care if you spell WordPress correctly. 
with a capital P. What if you plug in right in the, your editor where it'll automatically change all your paragraph nodes to spell WordPress correctly? Or you make sure uh, make sure that your, your Im images are a certain size inside the editor, and you can have visual feedback for oh, whether that's true or not. Or frankly, you know, if I if I don't have to write another short code for the rest of my life, I'll be more, more content mm -hmm. uh, than anything because you know, short codes are awful. Sorry. All right. Any other questions? Where can I get that amazing wig? Um, I think I got, I think I got this from Taobao. <laughs> it, it, it was in sketchy packaging, but um, but if you want it, <laughs> Joe, uh, Joe, if you want this wig, you can have it. I, I, I need hair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I shaved my head in order to wear this wig, so you know, you know, it's a dedication, right? <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, any more questions? Yep. More practically, it, you said you learned the Gutenberg API throughout this project and a couple of projects you worked on. Cold coming into this, how long did it take you to pick up Gutenberg? Was it a worthy experience? And are you looking forward to using it more in the future, or are you kind of skeptical? Okay, so it took me about so okay, so it took me about like a week to learn Gutenberg API, but that's because I already had React and Redux experience. So most of my my experience with the API was was fighting the ambiguous documentation. But it's still a work in progress, and people were working on it. But the, about the time, the documentation for Gutenberg API, block API, wasn't very good. But after working, working on it, because like, I'm someone, so I, I, was a lab, I was a lab for a press de uh, for, uh, developer, and I came in right when Gutenberg started happening, and people started like, you know, saying the world was going to end. Um, so as someone who despises the classic editor, I, you know, We'll embrace our Gutenberg future. Alrighty. Any other questions? Are you going to come out with a version of this where you could have like four end options but only two questions that lead into them? That's what I think. If at least 15 people DM me on Twitter asking for that specifically, then yes. <laughs> so, so, just before lunch. <laughs> right? What if I open an issue on GitHub? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it'll be there. You know, I'll look at it and then but I'll ask for the 15 Twitter DMs. <laughs> All right, I think uh, we're on time. Yeah, I mean, if you want to wrap it up, you can wrap it up. All right, so I will be um, wandering outside after this. Look for this. <laughs> Look for this, and um, if, if you want a if you want a, a demo of the of mobile side or like you know like walk through to the code, I'm more than happy to. But otherwise, thank you for coming to my talk.